Oh, yeah. Welcome to the swamp. You're listening to the voice of IWA Flip here on Interfed Radio. Welcome back with me in studios, Tag Team Commissioner of the Louisiana Swamp League, Gerald Horton. Gary, welcome to the show. Thanks, Flip. Thank you for having me. Oh, man. Dude, we got we got a whew, lot to cover today, buddy. This, this league is like whew, from one day to the next. Unbelievable, brother. Un freaking believable, man. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of excitement in this cycle that's very, very awesome. Oh, yeah. You know what? A lot of interleague matches being signed, a lot of action through the Steel Interfed. Uh, shout out to uh, Will Wisdom. Shout out to the GAL. Shout out to the AWL and all the other uh, wonderful uh, leagues in the Steel Interfed. Uh, just a great place to play. Um, you know, some wonderful commissioners uh, doing work to help uh, all the managers that are playing within the steel, you know, get a little more for their buck and uh, greatly appreciate uh, that hard work. Now, um, this is a LSL show, but I do want to congratulate the AWL for their, whew, whew, I mean, for their lesson, I guess, I guess that, I mean, that's, I mean, one, one match, we managed to scrape up one match. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, well. Well, congratulations to the AWL. Not taking anything away from them. They are some tough uh, mofos over there in the AWL, so shout out to them. Yeah. Uh, Will Wis- yeah. Oh, yeah. Will Wisdom runs a tight show over there. So. Yep, a very tight show. Couldn't, couldn't expect anything else from them. But uh, let's get let's get into this, uh, this swamp because we got a lot to talk about, man. Cards went right back up like uh, like we thought they would. Uh I uh, obviously want to shout out to GAL, you know, one of their fighters came and uh, did some work, wanted to fight a couple of our fighters who were already having a busy uh, tour, busy cycle, a busy uh, work uh, workload with the uh, bragging rights uh, pay-per-view. But hey, you know, took advantage and took it to a couple of our fighters, a couple more than a couple, maybe. But uh, so shout out to the GAL. Uh, go take a look. That's, I believe, the Steel uh, Women's uh, League. So, go check it out. Um, now, this is uh, spring 2020 here in the Steel. And uh, this is uh, bulletin number 223 for our Louisiana Swamp. And uh, believe it or not, man, this person is rewriting history here in the Swamp. Uh, shout out to Leprechaun, a four-time uh I guess uh, four-time champion, uh, bringing home ten free matches. Uh, so he, he he likes that swamp title around his waist. Like I said, yep. uh, so shout out to him. Uh, but we got some new competition at that top five, so it's going to get a little oh, yeah. tough. So hopefully he can uh, hold on tight. Uh, American Extreme Champion Bullfrog Bob. Yep, he made it. Whew. Oh my goodness. From the swamp to the top. Look at you, man. Good job, Bullfrog Bob. Good job, uh, Bullfrog. Yeah, King of the South champion, the one, the only, the bunny goddess, Terry Black. Shout out to Terry Black for putting it down this cycle. Very proud of her. She really stepped up her game this cycle. Oh, yeah. Uh, Southern Heritage champion. Good to see him back in action. Prince Tear, welcome back. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, Prince Tear. Yeah, baby. Uh, now, you warned us about him. Primetime elite champion, Jake Walker. Oh, yeah. Yep, congratulations, Jake Walker. I said this kid was going to come in with a vengeance, and he has. Oh, yeah. Uh, brass knuckle champion. Ranger to the title page, War Goddess. Oh, yeah, congratulations to War Goddess. She has really stepped up her game, too, as well, this cycle, and she's back on the front page. Congrats, War Goddess. Oh, yeah. Uh, Colossal Fear champion. Uh, uh, returning? Uh, I'd be glad to have him back. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, the more competition, the merrier. Uh, welcome back. Uh, jerks uh, ravishing Rick Jackson. Uh, North American champion. Black River Jack. Glad to have him yeah. back as well. Yeah, congratulations, Black River Jack. Mm, heck, I mean, good to glad to have these names back in action because 
like I said, uh, the la- last cycle was a little thin. I know we ha- we've been having this interleague uh, stuff, but when, when I saw the Carnage went right back up, and oof, that's awesome. Uh, so glad to have uh, glad to have them back. Look who else is back on the front page: Iron Fist champion King Achilles. Oh yeah, congratulations, King Achilles. I have a lot of respect for him. Nice, nice. Yeah, King. Yeah, like I said, him and uh, and Prince Tear. Glad to have them back. Right in time for our tag team. Uh, stuff so i hope uh mina and uh prince do well uh here we go first blood champion jerks the slacker welcome back yeah. congratulations slacker man mm. uh southern uh hardcore champion eh, the kind of great guys so not 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 just you know just kind of great yeah yeah, kind of great. Yeah, kind of great. Uh, barbed wire champion, the legend, Mister Hurley. Welcome, Mister Hurley. Good job, Mister Hurley. Yeah, no, so good. You know, glad to have uh, some new faces around. Glad to have some returning faces, and uh, you know, glad to have uh, individuals like uh, like War Goddess and uh, Bullfrog who have been here, still holding it down. So, congratulations to all our new and old champions. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, tag team champions, uh, kind of great, and Mister Hurley. Look at that. We got some yeah. new tag. We got some new tag team action. Uh, TV tag champions. Oh, look at these guys. Uh, Dean of Darkness and the Butcher Duchesne holding it down. Congratulations for them. Long time coming. Uh, six man champions. These guys have been hot on this six man game. Chicken legs, peg. And her one of a kind gang. Oh yeah, they they've proved you know with all the goofing around the shenanigans and dance offs, they are pretty good wrestlers. So they have my respect and congratulations to them. Yeah, they've they've been they've been doing well. She had another damn dance off this cycle, I think. I think she lost too. Mm, that son of a. Anyways, let's uh, let's move it along. The chicken legs, uh, TV six man champions. Look at these guys. See, I, I I like I like seeing this trio right here. Whenever we get them in, in full swing, the the king, the king, the prince, and of course, uh, awesome Mina, bringing home the TV six man uh, titles. Oh and yeah. That'll... Oh yeah, definitely a big congrats to them. Uh, this doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's pretty cool. Also, uh, bringing home the battle royal, uh, leprechaun, Wolf yeah. Trump. Mm. He's been doing really good in those battle royals and the league title. He's got that formula no one else has. Yeah, oh yeah. So, you know, shout out, shout out to him. Now, um, I touched base with uh, Tim right before this. We went over a couple of the belts, not all the belts. Uh, uh, I got I got to double check uh, for the G Force, but I believe Tim said that. Uh, uh, he went inactive, and uh, unfortunately, nobody beat him. Uh, so, Mister Fantastic may be stripped of his title, and I believe uh, Timothy had uh, an eight-way, uh, uh, some crazy uh, over the over the top match. Uh, like I said, I'll wait. I'll wait for Timmy to post it so I don't spoil anything. But uh, so should be should be fun uh, to see what he has coming up. And uh, you know, these are commissioner titles again. You know. We want to keep them with the active, you know, managers, and we want to keep them with the, you know, the ones that are interested in uh, carrying them, you know, because, you know, that's who, that's who trash talks. <laughs> trash talks. <laughs> so shout out, shout out to you know, Mr. Fantastic. If you're listening, we hope you come back and, uh, you, you, you know, if you do, you'll eventually get a shot again. But uh, our uh, diamond drop uh, wasn't contested. That's only can. Yeah, the the when when is our next pay per view? By the way, Gary, I want to say probably our next pay per view is going to be. I want to say probably in June. Possibly, uh, I'd have to touch base with the commissioners, but I want to say June. The June cycle sounds sounds about right. But yeah, that's a perfect thing because summer is beginning right there, and yeah, and it. Was- and it- and it also led some rivalries brew. I know we got a lot of great action brewing up right now, man. Fantastic. I know uh, uh looks like Triple A is going after the Reds. Looks like uh, 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 Catfish John renewed his rivalry with uh, Bullfrog, so that should be interesting. 
you know, likewise, Bullfrog looks like he's going after after John. So, oh man, a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I mean, Jake Walker, you know, like you know, calling his shots and you know, claiming gold. So you know, shout out to to Jake. You know, phenomenal rookie. You know, great upstart. And um, but uh, let, let's keep going with some of these champions. I know um, uh, the Flaming Rose uh, wasn't contested. That's only contested at pay per views as well, right? Yes, the Flaming Rose. Yes. Okay, so. Um, uh, the cruiserweight, uh, we did hear from the commissioner of the cruiserweight, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Robert Harper. Uh, he did say that he is working on a tournament. So those of you guys that consider yourselves cruiserweights, uh, make sure you reach out to Mr. Harper. I know uh, Horacio, uh, uh, the Sandman, uh, I know he's looking for cruiserweight action because he's he said it in his trash talk. I know Night Hatcher is looking for uh, cruiserweight action, so uh, just some some yeah. two two of the people that I noticed that were looking for cruiserweight action uh, within the trash talk, you know. So I can't I can't wait to see who else uh, makes a bid for that. Obviously, we had you know the former champion uh, Ricky, you know Ricky Steamboat, mm-hmm. who I know who I know is also you know going to make yeah. a bid. War goddesses express interest about being in the cruiserweight division too. Oh, oh yes. You know what? I I, I do remember uh, him mentioning that. So yeah, so we definitely got some great you know cruiserweight uh, action, and uh, you know can't wait to see you know some more people declare for that uh, for that tournament and uh, see where that goes. So uh, moving right along, um, the one that was at debate, and uh, I, I think I confused Timmy, and I think. Uh, uh, when Timmy hears this, he'll understand uh, that I, I I forgot to hit refresh, and I was you know already like looking for the new Gator Bait champion, and Timmy's all like, "No this, no that." And I'm like, "I'm not seeing it." <laughs> we're going back and forth, and yeah. I'm sure he, I, I'm sure you were also texting him as well, right, Jerry? And you're like, "Wait a minute, you're like, check this one out." But yeah. we, we we got to the we got to it, and uh, we're just gonna break it down. So uh, the Gator Bait is our twenty four seven. So. You know, the way we do it, using the HTML, using the find and the search, we go through, you know, card by card. And uh, last uh, last cycle, Eric Fontaine became the new Gator Bait champion. Uh, so he's the one that we start with, the search. So we searched him. Looks like he had a match, card number one, and unfortunately lost it to AI's Poison 1. So Poison 1 uh, became the new Gator Bait champion after that match uh, because this is a 24 uh, 7 match it's contested uh, pretty much contested for every time you step in the ring and any time you're around so um, so Poison 1 became our new uh, search target we uh, looked for him and believe it or not he lost the immediate the next card the next night the next card card number 2 he loses it to uh, the phenomenal war goddess now, whew, War Goddess goes on a run, defending it, you know, left and right. I think we must have counted at least 20 plus, right, Jerry? Yeah, 20 plus at least. Oh, yeah, defenses. So she she knocked it out of the park. So congratulations, War Goddess. Like I said, we, we know she's a fighter. Uh, and she didn't even lose it in a regular singles match. She gets pinned. In a six-man match by Paul the Butcher Duchesne. So, you know, I mean, like I said, it's a 24-7, so it can be lost at any time. Even in a six-man or a tag match if she gets pinned. And unfortunately, she was the one that got pinned. So, Uh, shout out to uh, the Butcher. Yep, have a lot of respect for him. So... Paul the Butcher Duchesne became and uh, retained because nobody else uh, defeated him in any other kind of match there uh, thereafter. So he's our new uh, Gator Bait champion. So congratulations there, uh, Mr. Duchesne. Uh, now, um, I'm not going to pretend like I know what the high stakes uh, championship is. I, I know that's another one of the, the belts that uh, was kind of flying around right now. Uh, but we'll wait for Timmy to explain that one, uh, if, if it does return or if he's just gonna, you know, 
see what he's going to do. Uh, but anywho, uh, so I'm not going to get into that one. I'm, I'm just going down my list right here. Um, uh, that pretty much takes us over to uh, your division, Jerry. And like I said, you know, since we got you on, I'll let you cover your uh, your tag team action. What, what, how did your belts fare? Okay. Well, <laughs> as far as I know, and everything's correct, I know the Extreme TV Tag Team Champions, the Luchadors, retain their titles. Again? Yeah. Holy moly. Now, I know, I know we got a lot of people asking for shots because I, I did go over the trash talk. So a lot of people are asking for title shots. So in our trash talk edition, we'll cover some of that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are wanting shots. So, you know, there's it's just a list that goes on and on. But I yeah, believe... You, 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 or you may have to set up like a little mini tournament, like a, like a four-team tournament just to spice it up. Well, let, the, we let, did. These, let, let let these people, you know, beat up each other before they get a shot at the now infamous Luchadores, man. Holy moly. Yeah. And I believe we do have number one contenders for those titles now. For these oh, nice. Nice. Well, who, who was the number one contender match? I believe it was, it was Mad Dog Maurice Duchesne and I think Paul Duchesne as well. And they beat and they beat the tough team of Salvation BTY and Crazy Chad Red. Oh, nice, nice. So yeah, so they're the new number one contenders. So the match there'll be in there'll be a championship match, but like I said, with the Punk Queen Sari Smith, the commissioner, she's gonna make a decision what type of match. So looks fun and exciting. Hell yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm 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 glad she got. Uh, like I said, unfortunate what happened to Mad Dog Mikey, but looks like we got somebody that's just as eager and uh, and, and ready to get some action going. You know. Oh yeah, um, he is he is doing good. By the way, from what that, from what his sister has said, he's down in L.A. with lockdown right now, nice. hanging out with him. Oh yeah, there's that, that's somebody that can uh, help him recover quick, but. Oh. oh yeah. Now, um, our uh, our legacy title, uh, which is pretty much the one that we uh, kind of uh, this is the one that we battle for between uh, between leagues. Or another Steel Interfed League, uh, uh, excuse me, Steel Interfed uh, title. Um, what happened with that one? Well, at bragging rights, this was a challenge that came down from from. From Will, Commissioner Will over there, mm-hmm. and we and all when we um, authorized it, it was the challengers of the AWL, the mysterious Madam Mask and her partner, the unpredictable Saber, against 10K's Dogman Montana and Bullfrog Bob, and the match was championship match. It was decided in Ultimate X, which. If people aren't familiar with it, the belts are are hung up in the rafters, and you've got and there are ring ropes up there, and you've got to climb up there and pull both belts off to win. Well, both teams fought hard, but in this business, only one can win. So the AWL, which I considered an upset, Madam Mask and Saber are the new U.S. Legacy Tag Team Champions. Mm. Oh, you know, sh- shout out to them! Like I said, the AWL definitely came to play this cycle, and. Uh... Yeah, you know, you can't you can't hold it forever, uh one of a kind, so. Yep. And now, the imp yep. now you said you said this earlier, but we said uh they finally they finally got defeated. Oh our, yeah. Our our our, our, our grand uh, champions, our grand champions. Oh yes they did. They got they were defeated. They were, yep, they fought hard, and I've got to give Leprechaun, the Indomitable One, and Hardcore Genie Lane all the credit in the world. They were mighty fine champions and were good defending champions, but this night wasn't theirs. So they ended up, they ended up facing the team of Violent Victoria Red, Harry Greenwell, and General Chuck Mobley. They faced them in a ladder match, and both teams 
did both teams fought so hard. I mean, this match could have gone either way. I mean, the favorites were the champs themselves because they were undefeated. But like I said before, on any given night, anybody can beat anybody. So they fought as hard as they could, and they were defeated by Violent Victoria Red, Harry Greenwell, and General Chuck Mobley. So those are our new six-pack challenge champions. Congratulations to them. Oh, most, most definitely. I mean... I mean, they held they those guys uh, held on for quite some time, and uh, you know to to say you beat them is, is is an accomplishment of its own. I mean, now I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna call call out names. I think uh, from what I was looking at the numbers, it looks like uh, the indomitable one must have been the weakest link this cycle. Cause ugh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had a. He had an off day. I mean, it was it came down between him and Violent Victoria Red, and you know what? It was just it was their night. Victoria Red snatched the belts down, and that was it. So yeah, he, he may he may want to take it easy on the donuts. Yeah, he may want to. We've talked to him in the locker room about that, and I've I've heard Commissioner Rob and Sari, Commissioner Punk Queen herself, Sari Smith, talked to him. You know, hey, you need to better your diet he was just eating a big box of donuts it's like you know and they <laughs> weren't him. but we'll we will decide i have the punk queen sari smith is really looking into putting some six mans together because she was talking with all the wrestlers like from 10k to the bunny trio you know just different people and wants their input so she's going to make a decision on new challengers for those titles oh yeah and oh yeah. oh yeah, she also made a decision too. There was a number one contendership and everything for the U.S. Legacy titles, and it was the Catfishes, I believe. Catfish, I think it was Glenn and John, if I'm not mistaken. And they faced the team of the new t- tag team of Legion and Eric Fontaine in a Swamp Street fight. And the new number one contenders, both those guys were, both teams were tearing each other apart, but it can only be one team and ended up being Legion and Eric Fontaine as the new number one contenders for the United States legacy titles. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Yeah. That, oh, that, yeah. That, that's a great, that's a great tandem right there. Yeah. Eric, everyone knows Eric's had an attitude change as of late and, but I mean, believe me, I've, I was trying to talk some sense to him what was going on and we got into it and it took a lot. It took war goddess and Terry holding me back and violent Victoria red and all that Legion. And I think red rum and death inferno came in and was holding him back. And I made a promise. I wasn't going to step into the ring anymore and just be a manager. So I decided to, you know, coordinate with the other managers and with the bunny trio as well. And especially Luscious Lori, who's now the the other manager for the Bunny Trio. I still manage them, but she helps me out because of my other wrestlers that I have to manage also in AWL. So mm. now, uh, before I get into the women's division stuff, did you see we had the return of Polly? Oh yeah, she came back. I was wondering where has she been. I asked her, "Where have you been?" And she wouldn't talk to me. Oh man, yeah, she was heartbroken. I mean, she saw Fontaine turn, and she was just distraught. I mean, but we'll get we'll get more into that during our trash talk show. Uh, but uh, let, let me cover the women's division. This is uh, coming from uh, Double R's uh, report. Uh, looks like um, at next pay per view, uh, when the Steel Interfed uh, women's title comes to the LSL. Looks mm-hmm. like chick looks like chicken legs uh, won the shot at that uh, at that match. So congratulations, chicken legs. Like I said, she has been on fire. Um, and then looks like at the next pay per view or the next time the uh, Flaming Rose title is defended, looks like Ellie May won the shot at that. So shout out to yeah uh, the queen of tag herself, pigeon toed Ellie May. Yeah, that's going to be her a feather. If she wins that, that'll be a feather in her cap because, you know, as many times as 
my wrestlers have battled Ellie Mae and Pipsqueak. They had that respect for them and still do. But, you know, Ellie Mae, she's been involved in tags, but I always thought she could go so much more besides tags. I mean, I don't have nothing against Pipsqueak, but I think Ellie Mae was it's more. Just, it's, just, it's just very hard to wrestle when Pipsqueak is just, you know, tied around her leg, you know. But I we'll mean, see. But he's got to respect the fact she has a chance to become women's champion, and he, you know, if he, he is her. For for That's you know you know what no I don't I I for some someone that pulled her in front of him to protect himself you oh dude come on you you should know by now Pitsweep's just not a very honorable half well, man he, he even it's it's sad that he's a half man already but he's you know probably like a quarter man truly because he's gutless yeah. he's gutless well, was, he's gutless well I was there when. I was there. I was in the back. We were all in the locker room watching it. We were all sitting there watching what was going on in that Inferno match. And, you know, it's one thing, and even Ellie Mae said, you know, it's one thing if she would have gotten by herself, super kicked into it, she could accept the fact she got burned. That's part of the match. But she goes, the thing that was going, the action was in the ring, and she's standing right beside Pipsqueak. Big Mama goes for a super kick on on pipsqueak and next thing you know she goes next thing you know i get pulled right in front i'm getting hit with a super kick in the face she gets knocked into the ropes and gets burned mad dog mikey you know when she went down he was one of the people who grabbed the towel and was running the ring and there were officials and pipsqueak's running off and when he mad dog mikey was staring him down pipsqueak gives him the middle finger and starts laughing it's like okay that's that's it that's cold and that's low oh yeah it's bad you know, enough. He's it's bad enough. He's three foot eleven and a half, and he yeah. still go and he, and he still sinks even lower. <laughs> well, and and then one of Mad Dog Mikey's acts was after that happened. He's in the backstage area talking to the paramedics, and then you have Victoria Red, Tessa Red, and cheerleader Sassy Red wanting a piece of him. And I'm like, and he was just I was standing there listening. He's like, okay, okay, okay. And he goes, I didn't like this either. None of us did. So he got put in a proper manners match and. He got the crap kicked out of him. Oh, yeah. Believe you me. <laughs> I think he got put through a table. They did triple choke slammed him through a table. Well well deserved, I might add. But I think Ellie Mae, you know, she's, I think after that, she's definitely, she's gotten more aggressive. She's got a better, better wrestling ability than I've ever seen. And she really doesn't need Pipsqueak being at ringside. She's kind of given that attitude like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this on my own. I'll be there for you in tags, but I don't want you interfering in my singles matches. Oh, I, I don't blame her. Now, um, the only the only other match we're waiting uh, we're, we're waiting for the results, obviously, from Kim to uh, give us the result totals uh, for this uh, cycle, and then we can determine the winner of the uh, King of the Swamp. So, I think that's the only one we have pending. So. Oh, yeah. uh, Jerry, uh, any other commissioner news you want to put on this one uh, for the listeners in terms of uh, – oh, wait a minute. We, we, we should shout that out. Uh, if you guys are listening to this, uh, uh, this is the last cycle you can sign up for uh, the Pipsqueak Challenge. Uh, if you're listening and you have signed up, make sure you email Kim. Let her know to take the money from your uh, wrestler and uh, put, it in, uh, put it in the bank. And then the winner will take uh, take all the money. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, inter- that's one. That's one of them. Yeah, and then you, and then you have the the tag one with uh, with Rob the mix the mix match, the intergender tournament. Yeah, and I think I think that one is uh, completely filled. So during our trash talk uh, edition, we'll go ahead and uh, see there. Oh yeah, so like that. You know, we have uh, Rob. And Jerry on at the same time, and then we'll do the seating for uh, for all the teams there that have uh, entered. Um, what else? Uh, what else do we have? Uh, did, we did mention uh, the cruiserweight tournament coming up. The cruiserweight and, tournament, and so. some of the wrestlers are. There's now. Oh yeah, there was another thing I should throw out there too. There is a best of seven series going on between the Bunny Goddess Terry Black and Sandman Horatio Sanderson. Oh, that's a nice one there. Yeah. And right now, Terry is up two to nothing. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, 
I, I, I think with uh, we we got a lot to talk about. I saw uh, I saw Mobley uh, back, and of course, uh, you know he's relentless against the Duchesnes. So, you know, I I, I feel bad for the Duchesnes because you know Mobley's just one relentless uh, sob. I mean, he's he's nonstop, brother. Uh, but yeah. You know, shout out, shout out to them. Glad, glad to see they've uh, looks like uh, they've come together with uh, Annihilation yeah. Inc. And uh, looks like Jake Walker has also uh, crossed path and linked up with them. So we got a lot to talk about, huh, Jerry? Oh yeah, we do have a lot to talk about with all that uh, going on, especially Jake Walker being recruited by AI. And oh yeah, I tell you what, that was the best move for him right there. I mean, they talked to Luscious Lori about it, and she said, you know, I will still be Jake's manager, but you know, he wants to be in your group. You know, if you guys got his back, I'll I'll trust you with that. But right now, with her being with the bunnies managing them, she'll be in Jake's corner, sort of, or handle anything like contract things for him. But she pretty much said, you know, if you want to be on your own with these guys, they got your back, that's fine. But call me if you need me. But you know where I'll be. Nice, nice. Yeah, so make sure you tune in to our uh, Trash Talk edition of uh, Swamp Talk. Uh, like I said, a lot going on with the Reds and the Catfish Gang. Oof. So yeah, we we got a lot we got a lot to cover. So, uh, mm-hmm. but for now, uh, this has been uh, Swamp Talk LSL uh, here on Interfed Radio with uh, the one and only Jerry Horton and myself, IWA Flip. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good night, guys.